Hey everybody, it's uh, J Mac here or Recon Networks on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to be doing my third tutorial today. It's going to be a short one, uh, just because I don't really have the time. And I, this is actually going to be kind of like a little treat to uh, work you into the harder stuff that we're going to be going into. Because the next tutorial, my fourth one, is actually going to be going through uh, a larger program that uh, goes through a bunch of functions and all this stuff. So it's going to be a lot of information to take on and some of the information that I'm going to be putting into this tutorial is going to be applied to that one. Uh, so the first thing that I want to say really quick is uh, reconnetworks.com if you're having any problems with even starting your code up or anything like that just let us know on there. Uh, that's what we created for. There's no ads on there, there's no nothing and uh, it's just a bunch of guys talking about coding and you know even if you have computer problems we have stuff on there for that too so make sure to check that out. Uh, okay, so we got our includes. Uh, as you can see, there's an include of C time in there, and that is needed for this, and, and that accesses the rand function. So we're going to be uh, introducing a random number generator in this in this thing. It's basically a game. Uh, I, I've, if you've ever seen the um, the game where you guess how many gumballs are in the gumball jar at like a party or whatever, that's what this is going to be doing. Except you're playing against the computer. Uh, so I thought that would be pretty cool. So we're going to get right into it because I don't want to make two sections here. We're going to do uh, initializing a few things here. And we're going to, for I guess, is we're going to initialize it to zero. And I'll explain that to you in a second. And so we're going to be doing a while loop. Oh, jeez. A while loop here, which is true. So it's always going to run. I'll explain to you how that works at the end. Uh, and then we're going to do system cls sin dot clear and i guess is is zero again and i know that's going to seem kind of weird but i'll explain to you how that works after okay so now we're going to be doing our random number generator here so srand uh, static cast unsigned int uh, time, and then it'll be zero. Okay, so basically what this is, is it accesses uh, its static cast to an unsigned integer, which basically changes it to an unsigned integer. Uh, the SRAN function, basically all you need to know is it's required to, to create a random number. Uh, if you want to do more research on it, that's fine, but I'm not going to get much more into it than that. Uh, iGumballs is equal to the RAND function modulus uh, and I haven't really explained modulus but modulus just basically takes the remainder of a division and we'll do 1000 plus 1 and basically what that does is it takes a number any number between 1 and 1000 and it uh, accesses the random number generator it actually goes through that table and picks out some random number within that field so it's important to to get that okay so now basically that that since that's done we can actually start writing the output so let's say how many gumballs are in the gumball jar you guess or something like that and then we'll do a go oh, and then we'll do a carriage return and then we are going to do our cin for that so we'll do cin I user guess and I totally forgot the insertion operator there so okay the next thing that we're going to do is a little if statement uh, so if I user guess is greater than I gumballs we'll do a C out uh, too high a couple of carriage returns and I'm just going to copy this to save myself a little bit of time so if I user guess is less than oops oh geez is less than I'm gumballs it's too low so that's pretty simple uh, all you need to do really is is read it to understand it if you know math you know that and then we're going to do an increment. So that's how I guess it comes into place. Uh, I haven't explained this before. Basically all it is is plus plus is plus one, increment of one. So uh, 
as you can guess, I guesses as a variable is going to be used as the amount of guesses that a person takes to uh, do this. So, uh, you know what? I think I actually should probably do something here. Yeah, I think it'll be easier if we do it this way. Let's do a do loop. Do while, I mean, as you probably guessed. So that's put the do in between the endel and the uh, cn I user guess. Actually, I should probably do. <laughs> Let's do like enter your guess, something like that. It's up to you, whatever you want to do with that. Uh, and then we'll end the do while loop here, and we'll go while i user guess is greater than i gumballs or i user guess is less than i gumballs it'll redo the loop and that's where this comes in right you got uh, enter your guess so it'll just keep going until you get it right basically so that's now that that's done oh i got to end Add the semicolon at the end there, and then we'll do a C out. Uh, you guessed the right amount of gumballs. High five, or something silly like that. You can do whatever you want. A couple carriage returns, and then we'll do. Uh, you took. Actually, maybe we should put a space in there. And we'll go I guesses, because that's incremented to the right amount of guesses. And then a space there, I guesses. A couple of character turns again. And then we're going to want a system pause, because uh, we're going to want the system to pause after the... Because we're in a true loop, right? As you can see up here, we're in the true loop, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to want to loop back to here immediately, and you don't want that to happen, right? You want it to you want it to pause before you do that. So we'll end that, and as you can see, that goes back to the true loop, and that's how this comes in. System CLS it clears the screen, it sends it it's clears the sin or CN operator, and then I guess this is re-put to zero so that when the person redoes it, they're not the guesses don't just keep adding. It reinitializes it reinitializes it to zero. Okay, and then. We just got to put our return zero and our ending curly bracket for the entire code section. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let's see if it works here. We'll save it and start without debugging. Got zero warnings, zero nothing, so we're good. Uh, how many gumballs are in the gumball jar? You guess. Let's say 500. Too high. 400. Too high. 300. 200, 100, oh, uh, let's go 50, oh, look at that, 50 on the bot, on the dot there, <laughs> got lucky, you guessed the right amount of gumballs, high five, so then you press any key to continue, and it restarts the program again, so let's say 500 again, 400, 300, 200, 100, uh, let's do 150, 170. Okay, so it's somewhere in between 150 and 170. Let's say try 160. Okay. Let's try 155. Still too high. So 154, 153, 152, 151. Yay! So you, as you can see, it takes 13 guesses, and that's the amount of guesses it actually took me. So it clears everything, like I said, and then right, redoes the program again. So that's a, a little cool game that you can make. Uh, I understand it's not very uh, complex as in terms of the coding, but uh, it went through a couple of new a new things, a couple of new things that you need to learn and are very crucial to programming. So I hope you guys have fun with making this one and get ready for the hard one. The next one's going to be a tough one. So all right, have a good day and don't forget to check out reconnetworks.com. All right, bye bye.